Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the recent Broadway musical hit, One Touch of Venus, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Ginny Sims. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another big musical hit is brought to you transcribed by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, in tonight's story, the part of Venus will be played by Miss Music herself, Ginny Sims. And I'm Rodney the Barber, who tells you what it's like to know... One touch of Venus. The first time I ever saw Venus was in the main gallery of the Whitlaw Savory Foundation of Modern Art. I'd gone there to shave Mr. Savory. Class was in session, and I had to wait. deny me, Barbara. I've been waiting 3,000 years. You've awakened me with your ring. You're my love. I'm not your love. <laughs> I'm Rodney Hatch. And I'm engaged to Gloria Kramer. And... Uh, what did you say your name was? Rodney Hatch. Rodney Hatch. <laughs> Venus Hatch. Oh. <laughs> oh, go on, lady, please. I told you I was engaged. Of course, Gloria's mad at me right now, but we're going to make up, and I've got to have that ring. Tell me about Gloria. Huh? Tell me all about Gloria. 
Well, she's... Well, anyway, I love her. I had a love, and my love was fair. There was a summer's dawn. I lost my love. I never know where. Suddenly she was gone. The west wind stirred the meadow. The night she slipped away. And I seemed to glimpse her shadow. When the west wind brushes the day. Can you wake in my true love? West wind, can you whisper renew love? Speak to her softly of the dream we lost. The dream we lost. The dream we lost. you desire an old love when a new one is offered. Why do you want Gloria when you can have Venus? Oh, no, no, no. See here, you, you keep away from me. Rodney. I've got to get out of here. He's gone. Why should a man awaken you and then walk out on you? No man has walked out on me since I was born 3,000 years ago. I don't look 3,000 years old, do I? Well, of course I don't. No man has walked out on me since I was born 2,900 years ago. And if Rodney Hatch thinks he's going to get away with it, he's very much mistaken. I think. I hope. Will you tell me how these things happen? Have I trusted in love too much? When did the magic vanish? Have I somehow lost my touch? How gay the world could be Could I love him? Could he love me? Love shouldn't be serious, should it? You meet, you kiss, you start Perhaps you smile, you part. It happens the way that you plan it. If you hunt your foolish heart, your foolish heart, crying for one who ignores you. I thought 
thought I'd seen the last of Venus when I ran out of that art gallery. And believe me, I had to run because I knew if I didn't that I was liable to... to, to, to let her keep Gloria's ring. Well, I, I got home and I was phoning Gloria when... Hello, Rodney, darling. Oh, no. Venus. Rodney, how sweet. Oh, not you, Gloria. I was talking to another girl. What? I found you, Rodney. You've been running around the streets in that, 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 that petticoat? Rodney Hatch, what's going on over there? Gloria, I, I... You mean to tell me you call me up when you're with another woman? Well, believe me, I'm coming over there, Rodney Hatch, and when I get my hands on that creature... I can't you... stand any more of that. Gloria! Gloria, speak to me! She can't. I've silenced her. Oh, why did you do it? Rodney, look into my eyes. Don't mind, I'm a little busy right now. <laughs> I was just leaving. Rodney. Rodney. Some other time. I'd love to, but I... Rodney. There. That's much better. Now, put your arms around me, Rodney. Mm, that's right. Oh, gee. I never felt like this before. Very few men had, Rodney. When you're in love with Venus, you're in love with love. Speak love when you speak love. A summer day withers away. You're right, darling. How should we celebrate? Well, let's go down to Sheepshead Bay and have a big shore dinner. All right, darling. Whatever you say. touch of Venus in just a moment. You know, to us, the most wonderful thing about the Railroad Hour is the many friendly letters we receive from you listeners telling us how much you like the program. So, in turn, we've long wanted to show our appreciation 
Now we're ready. And, uh, well, Gordon, suppose you tell our listeners what we've got for them. Well, I'll be glad to, Marvin. Folks, it's our way of saying thanks. We put together a fascinating, colorful, 32-page souvenir booklet of the Railroad Hour, packed with photographs of the stars and members of the cast complete with interesting facts about their exciting careers. Yes, and there's the roll call of the Railroad Hour hit from Allegro to the Vagabond King, with dates, titles, guest stars, even a short synopsis of the plot. And an interesting behind-the-scenes tour of the Railroad Hour. Well, sir, it's the next thing to a visit. In fact, it is a pictorial visit to our Hollywood studio. And it's a gold mine of fascinating little-known facts about the railroads, too. Yes, there's more. But we're going to let you enjoy the fun of discovery for yourself as you leaf leisurely through the colorful pages of this interesting Railroad Hour souvenir booklet. Now get a paper and pencil and listen carefully while I tell you how to get your free copy of our Railroad Hour booklet. All set? Now here's what you do. Just print your name and address clearly, a penny postcard will do, and mail it to the Railroad Hour, Transportation Building, Washington 6, D.C. You got it? Simply mail your name and address to the Railroad Hour, Transportation Building, Washington 6, D.C. In a short time, the mailman will bring you your copy of the Railroad Hour Souvenir Booklet. And now, here is the second act of One Touch of Venus, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Ginny Sims. <laughs> telling you I was in an awful stew for a while. There I was, engaged to Gloria Kramer and in love with Venus. When Venus and I came back from Sheepshead Bay, there was Gloria waiting in the parlor of the boarding house. And, oh, brother. Rodney Hatch, what have you done with my ring? Oh, well, I'll tell you, Gloria, but... Mother was right. She said even if you did manage to pay for it, you'd probably lose it because All I... All right, I lost it. I hocked it, I threw it away. So what? That's telling her, Rodney. Rodney, who is this woman? I'm Venus. Yeah? Who were your parents? The Mediterranean. I was born of the sea foam. You're crazy. And furthermore, you're a man thief, a gold digger, Be and... careful, my dear. You can't help your temper any more than you can help your knock knees. But if you don't keep still, I may turn you into a toad. Is that so? Now, you listen to me. Oh, you keep still. What did you say? I don't intend to be pushed around by you any longer. Spoken like a man. You can't lead me around by the nose. A man's nose is his castle. Well, <laughs> I'm certainly not going to stay here and be insulted. I don't blame you. I'd go immediately. And I'm going to tell my mother on you, you cab. And you. <laughs> you. The transit Gloria Kramer. To think I've been taking that for five years. And if it wasn't for you, I'd be taking it for the rest of my life. What's the matter, Rodney? Well, suddenly I'm afraid. I'm, I'm afraid of losing you. Rodney, you'll never be alone again, I promise you. But gee, what if you should decide that, that I'm not the right fellow for you? Mm, I know what I want, Rodney. After all, I'm old enough to... Well, <laughs> well, anyway, when the one man in the world comes along, a girl like me just knows. You could shuffle him with millions. Soldiers and civilians, I'd pick him out. In the darkest caves and hallways, I would know him always. Beyond a doubt, identification come easily to me. Because that's The way I feel when there is autumn in the air. That's him. That's him. The way you feel when Antoine has finished with your hair. That's him. That's him. You know the way you feel when you smell bread baking. The way you feel when suddenly 
hearts to stop aching. Wonderful world, wonderful you. That's him. That's him. He is as simple as a swell in summer. Not arty, not actory. He's like a plumber when you need a plumber. He's satisfactory. You know the way you feel when you want to knock on wood. The way you feel when your heart is gone. Wonderful world, wonderful you. That's it. Oh boy, if that's the way you feel, we better start making plans. You ever hear of Ozone Heights? No. What are they? Well, it's a great big new real estate development over on Staten Island. Every bungalow's just the same. We all got an electric incinerator, a radio that looks like a fireplace, and a fireplace that looks like a radio. <laughs> and when you sign the lease, you get a year's subscription to a magazine. Oh, Rodney, you're sweet. You're exciting. You're wonderful. Oh, Jesus, creepers, if I love you this much now, just think how I love you in five years. Waiting for a wooden wedding. Golly, how the birds will sing. While we whistle in the garden, planting onions in the spring. Waiting for a wooden wedding. Golly, how the bees will buzz. Spreading pollen on the flowers. We can do what a bee can do. You shall have on every anniversary a present. You can pay for later. Maybe a cannon for nursery. Or a shell for judging. Incinerator. Waiting for our wooden wedding. Golly, what a trail we'll leave. Sip and Coca-Cola at the pianola. On our wooden Of course, Rodney. Ozone Heights isn't exactly what I'm accustomed to. Oh, you love it. Why, every day you can cook and sew and wash and talk with the neighbors. And before you know it'll be 7 o'clock and hubby will be coming up the stoop, the big stoop. <laughs> Won't you ever be late or early? Oh, no, sirree. I'm as punctual as clockwork. I like everything on the dot. And I keep wondering, if you see me every day, would you want to see me every night? Sure. <laughs> Married people are all the same, aren't they? Well, I've never been able to be like anybody else. Oh, don't worry. Ozone Heights will change all that. Now, you wait here. I'm going to phone and see if it's too late to apply for a marriage license today. All right, darling. Oh, Rodney, I do love you. But Ozone Heights, radios that look like fireplaces, and fireplaces that look like radios, washing clothes, washing dishes, <laughs> Maybe when I was 17, but now I'm 29, um, 3,000 years old. I, I just couldn't face it. Goodbye, Rodney. Venus? Venus, where are you? She was gone. I think I knew it long before I found the ring in the table, long before I ran through the streets to the art gallery and saw that my Venus was a statue again. I stood there looking at her. The nicest goddess I ever met. And I said to her, why did you leave? You said I'd never be alone again. We're late. Oh, darling, we're late. The curtain descends, everything ends. Too soon, too soon. Excuse me. Can you tell me where I register for the art course? 
I said, where do I register for the... Why are you looking at me like that? Do you know you look just like that statue? Where do you come from? Ozone Heights. What? You like it there? Well, I wouldn't think of living anywhere else. My name is Rodney Hatch. Well, mine is... A... Oh, never mind. You don't have to tell me. I know. Time is old and love so brief. Love is pure gold and time a thief. We'll lay, oh darling, we'll lay. The curtain descends, everything ends. We'll be back in just a moment. Thanks to Marvin Miller, Donna Hainer, and our entire company. One Touch of Venus with music by Kurt Weil and book and lyrics by Ogden Nash and S.J. Perlman was adapted for the Railroad Hour by Gene Holloway. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroad. Folks, you've thanked us in thousands of friendly letters for the music heard on the Railroad Hour. And now we want to thank you for your interest and kindness. And that's why we put together an attractive Railroad Hour souvenir booklet with 32 pages packed with pictures and sketches from the life stories of your favorite Railroad Hour stars and members of the cast. Be sure to write for your free copy. And please send your name and address to the Railroad Hour, Transportation Building, Washington 6, D.C. That's the Railroad Hour, Transportation Building, Washington 6, D.C. You'll get your copy as a personal gift from us in the very near future. And now here again is lovely Ginny Sims. <laughs> Gordon, I want to congratulate you. I understand the readers of Radio Television Mirror Magazine voted the Railroad Hour their favorite radio musical program. Well, that's right, Ginny. We're very happy that our show has so many friends. We feel that our wonderful guest stars like you have had a lot to do with it. So thanks again, Ginny, and thanks for a wonderful performance tonight. All aboard. Folks, next Monday we're doing something we think you'll want to hear. An English version of Puccini's beautiful opera... Madam Butterfly, with Nadine Connor as our guest star. Until next week, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> One Touch of Venus was transcribed in Hollywood and presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can be seen starring in the Warner Brothers production, The West Point Story. Miss Ginny Sims appears every Tuesday night in her own television show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. And now keep tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Continued fine musical enjoyment with the Telephone Hour on NBC.